try this sometimes? Another episode. <laughs> It's a very, it's, it's a, a bar you've just got to get over and keep it going. Thank you, and we'll see you later. And, um, and the, the, to have instead that, eee! Oh, that's so much better. <laughs> and, um, Russell absolutely loved it. He hadn't seen the video before. It was just bowled over. And I got to tell that to Robert, one of the girls. We went to a convention thereafter, and everybody was pointing at them and going, are you the squee girls? <laughs> it's the nature of modern celebrity. But, um, Anyway, I, I thought I kind of, it's really hard to do this without uh, any kind of shape to it, but I, I thought I'd sort of wander through what I've done on who historically, you know, in, in uh, you know, uh, chronological order, that's the word I was looking for. I'm not a writer before a certain time in the afternoon. <laughs> um, uh, I, I was a writer of the books and audio plays about Doctor Who in the Gap, uh, what people these days call the wilderness years, but um, I prefer to call the theme park years, because they were packed with exciting and lovely stuff. And, um, and um, Russell called me up way before the official announcement and said, because I'd just done, the year before, the Scream of the Shark, the animated Doctor Who with uh, Richard E. Grant, um, which is a strange piece looking back at it now. It's kind of halfway to New Who, it's full of awkward things and directions we would never go. Um, the animation's not too good either, but that's only because it was pushing the limit of what we could do in flash animation at the time. I actually won awards for the animation, but we, these things change so hard it looks pretty poor now. Um, but um, anyway, so Russell called me up and said, um, I have terrible news. Um, I won't do the accent anymore, this is bad. <laughs> hello, hello. I won't do the accent anymore. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, you're, you're thinking, he's talking one sort of English and then exactly the same sort of English. <laughs> <laughs> what does this mean? <laughs> you say potato, I say potato. <laughs> but, um, uh, so, uh, he called me up and said, um, I have terrible news. I'm afraid uh, there isn't going to be any more animated Doctor Who. And um, it, it, uh, because we're bringing back um, live action Doctor Who. <laughs> and um, I, I, I was leaping up and down about his bad news. It's a measure of the man. <laughs> it's a measure of the man that he'd um, decided to put it that way, that he was worried about how I would feel first. And he ended the phone call by saying, and you know, if you're not careful, well, you know. Bye. <laughs> and then, for the next six months, I kind of going, how careful do I have to be? <laughs> and we gradually became aware that certain of us knew about it and certain of us didn't uh, in the, in the um, comradeship of Doctor Who writers out of the books and audios. And, um, you know, certain people started to kind of you know, uh, walks a little, a little differently and kind of hold their heads high and with, with oh, I've got a secret. <laughs> <laughs> and we all realised we got the call one by one. Uh, Mark Gatiss and um, Robert Shearman. Um, and we all know where we were, where we got the call to, like, to work on Doctor Who. Rob Shearman was on top of a double-decker bus in his day job back then, which was counting the passengers that got on to double-decker bus. <laughs> And he got a call, his, his call from his agent going, well, we're not sure about this. You said you don't want to work for any more serious drama. Shall I just call them and say, no, it's Doctor Who? And he went, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I got the call um, at tea time. And um, I was in my uh, flat and uh, Russell said, so what are you doing now? I said, oh, um, I've just put some oven chips in. <laughs> and he said, well, you'll remember putting those oven chips in for the rest of your life. <laughs> because, and he did five minutes about how brilliant oven chips were and how they were a solid <laughs> <laughs> And um, because this is the call you've waited for all your life to come and work on Doctor Who. So I put down my oven chips and I followed him. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I, actually, I recall that um, I, um, I, I tried to make a joke. I said, oh, I don't know. And he said, oh, oh well, if you're busy, I'm no, no. <laughs> 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 
But, um, so he, he sent, um, oh, and Moffat didn't get the call until absolutely last, a few weeks after the rest of us. And he'd started to say things like, well, I don't know, I might be too busy, I own um, bastards. <laughs> And he got the call, uh, having just walked off stage, having collected a um, British Academy Award for his, team, for his TV series, uh, and ran into Peter Davison backstage with the award in his hand, who said, you're Stephen Moffat, aren't you? I love your work. He said, you're Doctor Who, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> got his phone, uh, had his phone ring, got his phone out of his pocket, and then found out that it was his agent calling him, told him telling him he'd just been off and work on Doctor Who. <laughs> That approached the best light of his life. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, Russell sent around a uh, serious Bible and the script for Rose. And this is way before we knew who was cast. And uh, as we all said to each other, the feeling on reading Rose was one of actually relief that he'd not just done it, he'd done it really well and that it wasn't a reboot, it wasn't a reinvention, it was a continuation. And uh, we just thought, wow, this is real. And the series Bible began with, the Doctor is a happy, cheerful, bouncing man who loves everybody he meets and they put, brings joy into people's lives. And then they cast Christopher Eccleston. <laughs> Nine, I recall, was in the series Bible. There were serious thoughts that he was going to be in the entire first season. And um, it, uh, we each had a, a paragraph long description of uh, the episodes without actually the names of who was going to write what. So but when we saw Charles Dickens, we thought, oh, that's Mark Gatiss. And uh, I saw one that began, this is the dramatic emotional episode. I thought, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the one with no special effects. Oh. <laughs> where, where, um, uh, the Doctor meets the friends of Rose's father, um, who's died, while Rose is forced to relive his death over and over again. Um, this is the one where we'll try and save some budget by not having any special effects or monsters. <laughs> and I just have a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach. Oh, no, this is me, isn't it? It was. <laughs> and uh, so I sent in a plot in response to that that had monsters in it, damn it. And, um, and uh, 18 drafts later, um, everything kept changing. We had uh, uh, nearly two years to develop the show, and so much changed. At one point, Chris wasn't going to be in Father's Day very much because that was going to be the episode where he got to go on holiday. And so I was nearly, no monsters, no special effects, no bloody doctor. And we all thought, we all thought that this we, was, was our one chance that we'd get one season because the standing of Doctor Who was so small, it was so ridiculous. You could have got good odds um, on, in fact, we were not the favorite to um, win the evening in terms of ratings at the bookmakers. Um, and so Russell told me at one point, Paul, don't feel it's your fault if by the time we get to your episode, we're not on BBC One and not in prime time anymore. <laughs> and, uh, it, you know, this was the level of expectation. It was, the show was a joke. And um, Russell said, uh, if we get six million viewers, then we'll hang on in there. That will be a major triumph. 